All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second portion of this week's episode of the Zoomer Sports College Football Show, episode 41, second week, week two of the football show. I will now be taking callers from the audience, people like you listening out there on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, watching on YouTube, listening on Google Podcasts. You guys can call in, just DM me on Instagram if you're interested in calling in, but we're going to take some calls now. And first up, we... All right, calling in now, we have Diego from Houston, who I probably think is going to talk some Clemson. Diego, what's up? How how we doing today? We're doing great, Andrew. How about you? Good. You're live right now on episode 41, week two of the Zoomer Sports College football show. And uh, what do you want to talk about today? Man, I want to talk about my Clemson Tigers, okay? You Did- know, last weekend, they didn't put up the best performance. You know, I put out my reaction video on Twitter. I was very disappointed on them. Um, I was very harsh on them, too. But I think it was fair, you know. I oh. mean, the O-line didn't play its be- their best. And, I mean, I don't know how the O-line is going to get better. But their defense played phenomenally. But what did you think about the game, Andrew? I have a... Here, here's my take. Sorry, I was getting another call there, but my take was Clemson or both these teams should not have won this game. The only, the only points there was not a single offensive touchdown the entire game. It was, it was a, it was a pick six throw by a. I'm gonna, I'm gonna botch his name. Diego is Ungalalele. Did I get that right or did I botch hey, that? Everybody botches his name. I just say <laughs> Yeah, I mean that, that makes sense, but I mean. After all the hype from last year's Notre Dame game and what what he's shown, I, I I've made the claim preseason that I thought DJ, I thought DJ was going to be a Heisman finalist sometime in his Clemson career. After that first game, bright lights in Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, he didn't he didn't show off and he got out. I mean, I wouldn't even call him getting outplayed. Like he threw for more yards than uh, J T Daniels did. They both had an interception. It's just unfortunate. Uh, DJs went back to the house and was l- literally the game decision point. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, this if, yes, he played two games last year, and yeah, that he played, even though they lost that game against Notre Dame. Um, I mean, it was only his third game starting. I don't know. I mean, he looked like he hadn't started a game all season. I mean, some of the balls he was throwing, man, they were just – out of bounds. I mean, nowhere near the wide receiver. And then he I looked mean, like he looked like a fish out of water during that game versus exactly, Georgia. I completely agree with you. Yeah, and the O line didn't help at all because he got sacked uh, eight times that game or seven, somewhere around there. But I mean, he was like a deer in headlights, and I like I agree. With- and I mean. It- it will be interesting to see how he plays versus South Carolina State. Hopefully, with a cupcake coming up, he can figure his way out and absolutely just put on a show uh, this Saturday at 4 p.m. at Death Valley, Clemson's home opener. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, I was just I was just saying about uh, uh how it hopefully versus this cupcake of South Carolina State at home, Death Valley runs down the hill, maybe gets the juices flowing. The butterflies out of his stomach, and he gets back to where he was versus Notre Dame last season, and he lives up to the hype that he has been brought to by ESPN and all the college football guys. Yes. Andrew, if he does not score at least three touchdowns this game, I will be highly disappointed. Um, I mean, thank God. I know Dabo Sweeney has a rule of not blowing out his opponents. Uh, you've definitely seen it uh, the last years when uh, – they go up like 31 0 at halftime and then they score like 20 points the next the next half and um i mean i just i i need to see what uh what dj is about during the south carolina state game um i completely agree um it's a cupcake and if they don't win by like 30 points or more i'll be highly disappointed um i just think uh they need to take control uh, of this offense, and I need to see the O line do uh, better protection of my quarterback. Um, as I said, he got sacked seven times or eight um, times, and I just need him to see 
um, to throw more precise throws. Uh, the defense, I have no problem with the defense whatsoever. As I said, they hold, they held Georgia to three points uh, this year. I mean, last game. Yeah, and I'll, I'll leave this before you go. Uh, one, the line for this week is minus 50. I don't think Clemson's going to win by 50, but they're obviously going to blow them out. Over under 61. Oh, uh, and then the defense I thought was great. James Sklasky, Xavier Thomas, Andrew Booth Jr., Brian Barisi looked great. And then one last thing for you. How good was it to see Justin Ross back on a football field? I mean, it was amazing. You know, last year uh... – with that neck injury, I was super disappointed not seeing him. I mean, during the playoffs uh, two years ago against Ohio State, he played phenomenal. I mean, no, it was Notre Dame, my bad. He played phenomenal. There were some catches that i seen that I have not seen any other Clemson wide receiver catch the ball like that. So hopefully, I know he wasn't able to show out this game as they were shut out, or well, not shut out, but they did not play so great. And um, and I just can't wait to uh, see what he does during the season. I mean, Justin Ross, what an incredible comeback story, and I can't wait to see what he does this season. Well, Diego, thanks for the call. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, you'll talk more on I think I might have uh, listeners on every college football – or um, callers every college football, college football show, but thanks for coming on. Uh, go Tigers. Have a great rest of your night, Diego. Andrew, once again, I'm the biggest fan on Zuma Sports Radio. Listen to this guy. He knows his shit. Peace out. I see, Diego. All right, we are now joined by Kyle from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Kyle, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, I want to talk about some college football betting, all right? All right, let's hear what you got. Uh, For this weekend, we got big games. We got Iowa versus Iowa State. I'm a big Iowa State fan right here. I think that they underperformed the first week against Northern Iowa, but I think they're going to bounce back and cover the spread minus four and a half. Yeah, I, I looked. I, I do like them minus four and a half versus Iowa. Iowa, a little shaky. They got Tyler Goodson in the backfield. They got Spencer Petras on quarterback, but I don't think any of those compares to Brock Purdy, who's like a six-year starter at Iowa State. And then Brees yeah. Hall, arguably the best running back in the nation, especially with Muhammad Ibrahim now out for the season. Yeah, I mean, I think I think they got a real chance to win that game. And if you don't want to bet the spread, I think the money line's great offer at minus one ninety. Yeah, I I would take the money line because I I I hate Iowa personally, and I I I don't like them in this game, especially at Jack Trice Stadium in Ames with game yeah. day there. The Cyclones fans are going to be jacked up, ready to go for this game. Oh yeah, I got some friends who are going to Iowa State, so they know. I've been getting that insider information. They tell me that Iowa State fans are ready. Are they? <laughs> yes. All right, that that is good to hear. Uh, any any other things you would like to talk about on the show? Uh, I would like to say, uh, UCF, fucking most underrated team in the nation. Hey, Dylan Gabriel, think, top three quarterback in the nation. I, I think that's easily. I mean, Will Russ start against Boise State last week. Came back through four touchdowns. Big win against them. Biggest comeback in the bounce house history. I think they have the best home field advantage in all college football. I think when it comes time for Cincinnati versus UCF, I think that's going to be a big matchup, and UCF's going to win that, placing them firmly in the top ten. I, I, I do like this. I, I mean, Dylan Gabriel, 318 yards passing last week. Isaiah Bowser, 170 yards Robinson and, and the wideout, Jalen Robinson, 140 yards. Uh, very talented offense. Perhaps one of the best in all of college football. Oh, for sure. All right, is that, is that all from you? Yeah, that is it. All right, thank you for your call. Uh, we appreciate it. Kyle from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Thank you for calling on and listening to the Zoomer Sports Radio. All right, thank you for having me. All right, see ya. Very... Very enthusiastic calls right off the bat from Diego there, who's cheering for the Clemson Tigers. And then Kyle there, big UCF guy. He likes Iowa State, four and a half spread. I also enjoy that. I like that pick. I do believe at Jack Trice. They they only beat Northern Iowa 16 to 10. So they came out a little sluggish week one. Week two, they're going to be jacked up, ready to go. 
I believe Iowa is the I was the ten number ten team in the nation, and Iowa State's number nine. I could be wrong. I'm gonna pull that up here, but it's just a great matchup going for game day is going to this game. It's the premier game of the week. Is um pulling it up here the top 25 associated press top 25 the ap poll iowa state i was right iowa state was nine and iowa is 10 so two top 10 teams battle here on abc i don't know if herb street's gonna be calling this game since it is an afternoon game and not the 7 30 game so that may be disappointing because kirk herb street's the best announcer in all of college football maybe sports honestly but we're gonna take a couple more callers here let's see who's next all right, we're now going to be live with Barstool Chicago legend. All right, we are now live with Barstool Chicago legend, Sammy Lauderdale from Chicago. Big Volunteers fan. Sammy, how are you doing this afternoon? Doing great, man. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Uh, big SEC guy, Tennessee. You guys got a big blowout versus Bowling Green. You got another cupcake this week, Tennessee Tech. How, how do you feel going into this SEC season? Are you? Are you guys back yeah. yet? No, we're definitely not. We actually played Pitt this weekend. Texas, oh, you're Texas, right. You're Texas right. Weekend. Texas. I did read that wrong. Yeah, you got. You're going against <laughs> Kenny. You're going against Kenny Pickett, and Pittsburgh did blow out. I forget who they blew out, but they blew out someone last week. They played UMass, and, and UMass might be one of the worst five teams in the nation. So it's kind of hard to really predict what's going to happen this weekend, but. Unfortunately, I know we've talked before, but I think the cupboards are pretty bare in Knoxville, and we don't have the, the depth that we need to, you know, to have get to go against a team like Pittsburgh, who's with Pat Narduzzi's kind of established his program the last couple of years. I just, uh, I'm not really too optimistic, unfortunately. Well, what are your thoughts on uh, the Michigan transfer, Joe Milton, coming to Knoxville, and do you have high hopes for him? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a doom and gloom call. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of different guys come in. We had a, a Virginia transfer, and we had a couple of guys, Harrison uh, uh, Harrison Bailey and another guy that uh, left the program as well. Um, it's just we've been trying to, you know, make shift uh, a team right now. And unfortunately, we brought in Joe Milton, who's he's got all the intangibles. He just can't hit open wide receivers. Uh, last week against Bowling Green, who we're not going to play, as bad as the defense of Bowling Green is, he went, I think, 11 for 23 or something and, and missed a couple wide-open uh, touchdowns on deep balls. It's nice that he can throw it. He just can't hit it. So it's it's one of those things where I feel like we're going to go three and out a lot and uh, we're going to uh, you know be, be down in distance a lot and we're going to lose, unfortunately. Uh, right now the spread against Pitt is three, which uh, the thing that scares me, if you're a betting man, you're taking and you hear all you know what I'm saying. The money's all coming out on pit, so I think that there's still value. There might be value on Tennessee being a home dog, but at the end of the day, just, I don't think we have enough to get it done with the early kick on Saturday. Yeah, 11 a.m. Central Time. Is it? Is yeah. it's in Knoxville, right? Not at Heinz Field. All right, so is that not at Neyland? Perhaps one of a top five stadium in all of the nation. Do you- it's it's awesome. It's it's awesome inside the stadium. Uh, I know I got some slack uh, when I commented on Chiefs tweet from some Tennessee locals. There's just not a whole lot of real estate to work with. Not so. I mean, it's pretty much there's huge hundred thousand uh, person stadium, but like outside, there's no big lawn areas where you can tailgate. Like I went down there a few years back, and I had a tailgate in a church parking lot. It's just there's not a whole lot of room to work with. But the inside experience with the power T and you're singing a rocky top every first down. It's a hell of an experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been to Tennessee's campus in Knoxville one time. It was extremely hilly. Maybe one of the – So hilly. <laughs> like there's – yeah, there's no open lawn. If you set up a lawn chair, you're going to fall down the hill. But I want to know your thoughts on their running back, Jabari Small. How do you think he will do this year? He, he's going to be by himself this weekend, it sounds like. Uh, our guy who got all of the yards this past weekend, Tyon, uh, Tyon Evans, uh, I think he rushed for like 120 or something. And apparently he's out. Yeah, apparently he's doubtful, at least, uh, at the best case scenario for this weekend. So it's going to be all Jabari Small. And I think he's a good back, but he needs another guy to, to change the pace. And uh, I, I just uh, I think this, again, this weekend's going to be probably pretty ugly. In, in, in my first, in the first week of the college football of the Zoomer Sports College Football Show, I predicted Tennessee to go seven and five. Do you think that happens? No, not a chance. 
we would have to be we'd have to be this weekend. We'd have to probably sneak up and beat Kentucky, and then we'd have to be. I mean, you're, we're probably going to lose the Old Miss. We're going to lose Bama. We're going to lose Georgia. We're going to lose the Florida. I mean, there's five losses right there. I mean, it's just you, you got to clean the slate. And with a, a new team, a new uh, system that hype is running, I just I don't see us having the depth that, that we need to have. I think six and six is the most likely scenario. But honestly, I'm, I'm more gearing towards a five and seven type of year, which wouldn't be the worst case. It's just it is what it is at this point. We're, we're rebuilding. So I, I, you, I feel like you have three more automatic wins on your schedule with Tennessee Tech, uh, yep. South Alabama, and Vanderbilt. You don't think you can sneak maybe – I think Mizzou is one of the most underrated teams in the SEC, but you don't think you could Great. beat a Mizzou, uh, South Carolina, or Kentucky at all, just pull off one upset maybe? I think Kentucky's the second-best team in the SEC East this year uh, with their, uh, their new quarterback they guess they got from uh, UK. I think Randy's from the Connecticut area and everything, but I, I think that's a new element that Kentucky's never had. Uh, so I think there's no chance we can beat them. Um, I, I think the South Carolina, Vanderbilt, Mizzou, we would have to win two of those three in order to get the six wins, let alone seven. I just I think we could probably lose all three of them. I mean, I, I'm that uh, bearish on, on the, the balls this year, unfortunately. I still think you guys can beat Pitt this weekend. I hope so. I hope so. And then, I just uh, again, I think it's a depth thing, though. I mean, we lost so much to the transfer portal. We lost our best, our best two running backs to North Carolina and Oklahoma. We obviously lost uh, our best linebacker to Alabama. I just, we just don't have it. Would you agree with this statement? Tennessee is the Michigan of the SEC. Like both their programs, are very historic. You have famous guys, Peyton Manning, Desmond Howard over Michigan, Charles Woodson. And you're both stuck in this limbo of mediocrity. I think that's good. I think Nebraska is probably more dead on. Yeah. Uh, Michigan's at least won nine games. I mean, we are – Mississippi State has more wins than us in the last 10 years. I mean, we just aren't the team that we used to be. And I think Nebraska kind of fits that mold where they used to be a powerhouse and they're, now they're just uh, irrelevant. Do you think Tennessee went downhill when you guys hired Derek Dooley? He, he <laughs> absolutely crippled the – the the program for sure i think lane kiffin would have been i think he was the perfect guy to come in after fulmer it's just when the usc job opened up and we, we had some recruits we were actually trending up and then when kiffin left the you know the train came off the tracks and it was uh yeah Dooley just didn't know how to run a program and he just hasn't been successful ever since. I mean, he had a, like a 500 record at louisiana tech before tennessee the only reason he got the job is because of his dad yeah, and I, my first, it's, this is the most random thing ever. My first college football memory, I don't remember what year this was, like 2011 maybe, but Tennessee was playing, I forget who, maybe Florida or Georgia, one of the two powerhouses in the SEC. And they initially won the game, but on like they had a goal line stop and won the game. But there was a penalty called because Tennessee had like 13 guys on defense. And then yeah. the other team and then scored on the next play, and they lost. And I remember the camera just panned to Derek Dooley, just like his disappointed frown. I think that just – that image right there describes how Tennessee football has been the last decade. It, it was Dooley. It was Butch Jones. I mean, they, they massacred a lot of fourth-quarter drives. I mean, we had – Florida up against the ropes several years, and they always came back and just got blown out. I mean, you had, I you mean, had good players under Butch Jones, Joshua Dobbs, Jalen Hurd, I, I, who I believe transferred, Alvin Kamara. I mean, yeah, we got playmakers all over the board. I mean, we have usually uh, a good offensive line that are, have a couple guys go in the league. Um, and defensively, we usually have a couple guys in, in the trenches as well. It's just the corners – it's the quarterback. We, we just haven't had a quarterback. It's Eric Crompton. It's Eric Gaines. It's, even Josh Jobs is good. He just wasn't elite. And we just need to have that extra umph in order to beat a Georgia, beat a Florida. And it really sucks you got to play Alabama every year. I mean, Florida doesn't have that. Georgia doesn't have that. Just Tennessee. Yeah, it's just the rivalry. But you might lose that with uh, Oklahoma and uh, Texas joining the SEC. And what, what are your thoughts on that? Because I think Texas is in the same situation as Tennessee right now. They're, I mean, they're obviously better, but like just their program in the last couple of years has been so down. Yeah, 
Um, I mean, I'm not looking forward to it because there's two programs that are coming in that are better than us. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's we got to get our own house in order before we can start looking at other people on the lot. Um, you know, I, I think uh, we probably, if there's a relegation system, I'd be in favor because we need to go somewhere where we can get some wins. But, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to pull over one of the powerhouses in the west over to the east. Uh, which is going to make things a little bit more interesting for Florida and Georgia. But unfortunately, we're going to be battling with South Carolina and Mizzou and, and Vanderbilt for the foreseeable future until we get our uh, our act together. All right. I, I think that sums, sums up Tennessee, the situation in Tennessee <laughs> football perfectly. But Sam, thank it's, once again. You know what it is? You can wrap this up. It's like being a damn Cup fan. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what, what year did Tennessee win the national championship? Uh, 98. That was oh, it's Peyton Manning and uh, oh, 1999, yeah, that, and, that year, and that's that's basically 2016 for the Cubs, and it's yeah. just been downhill ever since. 100. percent Yeah. Well, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, always welcome to hop on and uh, just let me know if you want to talk Tennessee football. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once again, thanks for coming on, Sam Barstool yeah. Chicago legend right here, Sammy Lauderdale. All right, thanks, Sam, for coming on. Thanks, man. Always great talking with Sammy Lauderdale. I enjoy his calls. Um, uh, go follow the Stooley Clubhouse. I'm a part of that, and we do uh, things. Ben Mintz will be coming on Wednesday from Barstool Sports. We're talking college football with him. So we, I do a lot of stuff with them as well as podcasts I have here. So be sure to go check them out on Twitter, Stooley's Clubhouse. They have over like 2,000 followers now, so go check it out. Now on the air with, from Fort Worth, Texas, Caden, how are you doing this afternoon? Hey, what's up, Andrew? Big fan of the show. Thanks for taking my call today. Um, just wanted to call and uh, give a little piece of information, maybe a little tidbit um, to help make the, the Zoomer sports radio listeners a little bit of cash this weekend. All right. Um, do, do what is right and take the TCU Horn Frogs minus 11 to cover the spread versus the Cal Bears. Um, TCU is riding high after a big win against Duquesne, powerhouse that is <laughs> Duquesne. And um, I thought they looked really good on both sides of the, of the ball. This is really the first year we've had a uh, complete receiving core. Um, got four guys all over six foot four. Um, finally have some uh, Big 12 depth. I'm going to go ahead and, and say that phrase because everyone likes to use the, the phrase of SEC depth um, to in order to compete at the SEC level. So we have that Big 12 depth now. So um, do what you know, ride the Horned Frogs, minus 11, and uh, get you a little walking around money next <laughs> week. Thanks so much for taking my call, Andrew. I appreciate it, man. Okay, and if you want to stay on for a little bit while we can discuss this uh, TCU. Oh, absolutely. I would so, love to. So on my first on the first episode of the college of the Zoomer Sports College Football Show last week, I said TCU, underrated team in the Big Twelve, going nine and three, finishing behind Iowa State and Oklahoma, maybe Texas. They might be might be tied at nine and three with Texas on my rankings. But what are your thoughts? Do you think they can go nine and three this year? I absolutely think we can go nine and three. I think we have some veteran uh leadership at quarterback in uh third year starter Max Duggan, who is shown some glimmers of uh, promise over the last couple of years. Um, looked really good against Oklahoma State and a top 25 win uh, to close out the season in 2020. Um, obviously with Trey Tomlinson and uh, Noah Daniels on the edge uh, at cornerback position, um, we're a threat to keep all the powerful offenses at bay um, in the Big 12, I think. Um, with our secondary, um, CJ Caesar, um, those two guys I mentioned, um, I think we're going to have a pretty solid chance. I mean, locking down Spencer Rattler and those guys is going to be pretty much impossible, but just kind of keeping them at bay and limiting those deep ball opportunities. Um, that's really what it's going to come down to. Um, I think Iowa State is a really good team. Um, I you still there, Kane? You just cut out. You still there? Sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, I think Iowa State's a little bit more beatable than um, the Oklahomas of the world just not having as explosive of an offense. So um, I think I'm more worried about OU. I think Texas is just 
I mean, Texas is Texas. Everyone's gonna everyone's gonna think Texas is good for the first four or five weeks of the season, and then I think they'll eventually uh, come back to come back down to earth. But uh, yeah, really excited. Football's back. Finally got some NFL as well. Yeah, we got a um, Bucks can, Bucks Cowboys tonight. Yeah, something I can lose all my money on <laughs> Sundays after I win some money on Saturdays. So. Uh, um, I don't really have a feeling on the Cowboys this year. I think the Cowboys could uh, could be in for a long, dusty couple of years. I don't, I don't know if Zach, Dak Prescott's the, the guy for the job, but that's a conversation for another day. Yeah, I mean, going back to this receiving core, I really like this. You got Darius Davis, Quentin Johnson, Tay Barber, J.D. Spielman, uh, Blair, Blair Conright. You just got, once again, Big 12 Deb right here. Yep. No doubt about it. And Thanks then- again, Andrew. One last Sorry, thing. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Driving around Dallas Fort Worth traffic. I apologize. <laughs> now you're good. One last thing before I let you get back to your drive home from work is I think TCU will beat Texas once again. I think that's a very safe, safe guess. I think uh, the, the numbers obviously show that uh, we've been the better team over the last decade. And like I said, Gary Patterson, um, he's someone that can game plan for anyone any given week, and I think that's definitely a game. Obviously, every game circled in a, in a 13 game season or 12 game season, but um, obviously, if you're in the state of Texas, anybody playing the University of Texas is going to have that game circled on their calendar. So, um, I agree with you, Andrew. You guys are doing an awesome job, and uh, keep up the great work, my man. Yeah, it's too bad uh, your uh, old QB, uh, Trayvon Boykin, has gotten into all this trouble because he was one of my favorite players. Uh, Growing up and watching college football back when it was like the Cardale Jones, Marcus Mariota, Marcus Mariotas, and Jameis Winston's of the world. Yep, old Deuce Boogie man. He he had a hell of a run. Kind of kind of uh, kept the TCU Horn Frogs in the spotlight after that that magical Rose Bowl season in 2010, and um, kind of kept the magic rolling into the early two uh, late 2010s, I guess I should say. Is there any bitterness that you guys not making that first college football playoff? Because you beat Iowa State 52-3, to and you did your job, but just Ohio State blew out Michigan. There's absolutely some bitterness. I think um, if we had gotten that fourth position, I think we would have done the exact same thing um, that Ohio State did Alabama. Um, we had the athletes outside, um, at wide receiver. We had the quarterback. We had the running back. We had the defense. Um, we had a first round draft pick, a linebacker that year, Paul and Paul Dawson, um, that team was special. And I just think that, uh, had we had say a brand name on our, on the front of our Jersey and not, not just a uh, little TCU that has a hundred thousand living alumni and not very many TV guys. Um, I think you could have been looking at a different playoff in 2014, but, uh, that's a, that's another conversation for another day too. <laughs> like if you were the Longhorns, do you think you get in over Ohio state? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, a coach championship, University of Texas is always going to get in the playoff, no matter what. They lost this coach championship to their name. Um, I think you'll you'll absolutely see them um, in the playoff. But now Bob Bowlesby has made a pointless Big 12 championship, and we don't have to worry about that. All right. Uh, I'll let you get back to your commute home from work. Uh, shout out to you uh, listening to the podcast. Uh every every week and whenever we get it out and thank you for calling in and uh go horn frogs rhett i mean caden yeah, <laughs> my yeah. bad go horn frogs caden yeah. rhett's an honorary horn frog being at fort worth now but yeah, go frogs andrew keep up the good work shout out to stoolies clubhouse let's go yeah two thousand followers on twitter uh we have we'll have a uh, ben mintz on next week and caden is also part of stoolies clubhouse here and do you want to give it a little pitch yeah dude Hop on the Stoolies Clubhouse any Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Good, good place to uh, come cut the cut the breeze about what's been going on uh, in the Barstool world. So thanks again, Andrew. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Caden. Man, bunch of great list, bunch of great callers. I hope you guys enjoyed that. This is gonna wrap it up for the caller segment. I'm gonna throw it over to my intro from the actual episode here, but I, I like this segment. Let me guys know. Instagram DMs always open. Twitter DMs always open. YouTube comments. Let me know if you would want to come on the show, maybe um, give your college football picks for the week and what your thoughts were on having callers. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did it make it feel like you're listening to ESPN 1000 on your drive home on the Kennedy? I'm no Waddle and Sylvie, but it, I had fun uh, taking callers. But thank you guys for listening. And go Illini, even though I'm wearing a Clemson hoodie. Go Illini.